everyone this is Shauna Noel with Studio Calico thank you so much for joining me today I'm super excited to be here I'm showing you a little tutorial on how to use the digital stamps and brushes that you can find in the digital section of Studio Calico now today I'm going to be using Adobe Photoshop CS5 but these techniques will really work in any version of Photoshop I'm gonna be talking about how I created this um, layout for Neverland I had so much fun creating it. I love the stamp to a million thousand pieces. It's so fun and adorable. Um, and it really just lends itself to its own theme, which is really fun also. So as you can see here, I've created a base page with the digital stamps. And then I've added paper products such as this paper, the rub-ons, the stickers, and the enamel dots to really give it a pop. Now when I made this image, I... Um, simply printed it from Photoshop to create my own base page. So what you're doing is you're creating your own pattern paper. It's so much fun and unique and you can really make it whatever you want it to be. So this is what it looked like when I printed it. Now as you can see I've left like a, I know I want to like add a little embellishment here. I know I want a photo around here. But I really had a lot of fun creating and getting to this point in Photoshop. Now when I typically do this, um, I will sketch and imagine things I want to create with the kit before it even arrives. So that's what's really fun about the digital stamps is you can create these base pages and have them ready to go for when your kit arrives and you just get kind of that kick start. I love it. So to create your canvas, you're just going to go to File, New. And I'm an 8x8 scrapper, so I'm going to go ahead and go 8x8 and just make sure your resolution's at 300 to create a nice crisp image when you print. And go ahead and press OK. And then you're going to go to your brushes. Now hopefully you already have them loaded. And the way you load them is you push this little button here and you just go to load brushes and you find where you have them saved. But I've already loaded mine so we're just going to scroll down. And we're going to start with the moon. Now I like to create a layer for each kind of set of designs I'm working with. So let's call this layer moon. And we're going back up to those brushes. Click on the moon. When you drag it over to your canvas, it's going to be super big. So you just want to size it down. As you can see, it's really touchy. I only barely moved it. It's already pretty small. So you kind of can use the move tool to rotate this and resize it however you want and then move it up on your page wherever you want to create your image from there I'm going to layer new layer and I'm going to create another layer for my sentiment so let's call this one to the moon and back sorry okay so go ahead and push your brush tool again and you're going to find your sentiment and again, it's really big, so you just want to size it down. And what's nice about having it on its own layers, let's say you do create it a little bit bigger than the moon, like that. It's on its own layer, so you can manipulate this image totally separate from the moon. It's not going to change the moon. Let me change this one. So you just want to get that in there where you want it. Push Enter to apply that transformation. And then I'm going back to layer, new layer. And I know I'm going to want to use the wand star, like the little dangly star. I call it the wand star. So I'm going to name this one wand. Go back to my brushes and find that cute little star. Here it is. Now you'll notice this one is facing a different direction than I'm wanting to use it in. So I'm going to go ahead and resize that a little bit. There we go. And then you can totally rotate this separate from the rest of your image and resize. Enter to apply that transformation and then place it where you want it. So again, we're going to go to layer, new layer. Let's call this one stars. Push enter. And let's see, go back to your brush tool. And what I love about this stamp is it comes with three different stars. So this is where you can kind of have fun and start to really build your composition of your page. You're going to select a star, resize it, and, and because you can do any size you want, you really could get a million different looking stars from this one, one digital kit. So you're just going to stamp these all over the page. 
and then come in here and get some other stars. And I'm going to keep all the stars on the same layer. Live on the dangerous side tonight. Let's pick this last star. Let's make these really little and go all over. These are so cute. I love these. I kind of am addicted to stars after this kit. <laughs> so let's say you are loving how this is coming together and you just want to add a little bit of um, messiness. Because let's face it, every page could use a, a touch of that, right? Now, don't tell Mr. Huey, but there's actually digital paint splatters. I know. Crazy, right? But so much fun. Now, when I use these, I still will go back and add Mr. Huey's on top of it because it really does create a different effect. But I like to have a little bit of a base of messiness when I start because digital can really come off a little, I don't know, cold or um, too perfect, if that makes sense if you don't add things to help bring it to life a little bit. So I'm just kind of going to play with these. Paint splatters can be found online. Um, you can find them from, for free, but just make sure that you're being careful about where you're downloading them from. Now these, just like you would with Mr. Huey's, you just kind of place these in a way that is fun and random. You know, you don't want to be too perfect or precise. I like to kind of hang them off the page a little bit. I love this one and and just and just keep playing with them until you are at a place that you really are, are loving your page now let's say I kept working with this page until I got it to a place I was really ready to print it I'm just going to show you here this is my original page and as you can see it's um, in black and white as we've been working with I've added some text this font is by Heather Joyce and it's called the Dry Ribbon. She sells her goodies at the Lily Pad, which you can find a lot of other fonts that are fun to work with as well. Now, I know you're thinking, why is it black and white? This is so boring. But what we're going to do is really a fun technique that I love to play with. So here on our image that we've been working on, we have many layers over here. What you're going to want to do is merge those layers. So you're going to click the top layer. You're going to hold down the shift key and then you're going to click the bottom layer. You're going to right click and push merge layers. So then they're all one layer. So I've already done that here. This is all one layer. And we're going to go to layer, new layer. And we're going to call this super awesome color fun totes. Okay. Now, you're going to think I'm a little bit crazy, but I promise you it's going to work out in the end. <laughs> We're going to just really randomly color on this top layer here. And this, remember, this is a separate layer, so you're not ruining what you already have created. I know I wanted to have like a dark blue sky and fade into like a yellow star. So I'm going to use a little aqua in here. And then I'm going to use a little orange. Let's find a nice orange. Let's see. Nice orange. And you're just going to want to kind of be random. Um, make sure you're covering all the black as well. And then I'm going to do like a nice yellow. Okay. Now I know I want my journaling to stand out a bit more, so I'm going to want to go back to that original blue. To do that, I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool and click on that blue, which is going to bring back my color down here. Go back to your brush and just cover up your journaling. I want the journaling to be able to be readable because when you print it, yellows doesn't isn't always readable. So then you're going to come over to your super awesome color layer over here, and you're going to right click to clipping mask. Isn't that so much fun? I love that technique. It's so instant and it's just really organic in the way that it flows and nothing's perfect. I love this technique. It's so much fun. So if you're super happy with the color, you can go ahead and merge those. But let's say, let's say you're looking and you don't really love this ombre effect here. You can simply go pick the color that you want and go right back over, change the size of your brush so you have a little bit more control, 
go right back over the area that you want to change colors. And it's that symbol. I want this paint spot or this color. It's really easy. You have you have a lot of control, but by doing it this way, it doesn't take a ton of time to create a really graphic effect. And that's that's it. That, I mean, from here, I would simply layer merge down, and that's gonna that's gonna merge the color with your shape. So I would I would print this and 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 scrapbook on top of this. It's so much fun. It creates a really unique look. That's all your own. Um, and basically what you're doing is creating your own pattern paper that you already have your journaling and composition created within. I hope you guys have learned something tonight. I hope that um, I explained it in a way that you're able to understand it. And I cannot wait to see the pages that you create with it. Thank you so much for joining me. Have an awesome day. Bye.